For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. Now, this is interesting. He says, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. You ever thought about that for a second? You ever thought about how, how, how you might pray? And if 90% of your prayer is for provision, you're wasting 90% of your prayer. He already knows what you need. See, covenant-minded people, people who know they have a God, believers, don't pray for provision. They already know they have provision. You don't see birds talking about, Father, will you please drop some breadcrumbs down here for me? I, no, they already know it's there. So a better use of your prayer time is not for provision, it's for wisdom. It's for wisdom. See, when you understand, you know, I'm big on purpose. If you haven't gotten my book, Purpose Awakening, you need to get it. Not for me, but for you. It literally is a life manual. I'm big on purpose. And what I believe and what I've come to find out is that everything that we need is in our purpose. And so sometimes we begin to isolate our prayer requests. God, I want a spouse. God, I want some money. God, I want this. And God, I want that. And so you're, you're and those are legitimate desires. I'm not taking anything away from the desires. But what you should be asking God for is the wisdom that will lead you to your purpose. Because when you find your purpose, you'll find all those things. I promise you. Your money is in your purpose. Your mate is in your purpose. Your fulfillment is in your purpose. Your joy is in your purpose. So if you spend your time praying for those things individually, you might get those and miss your purpose. Hello, somebody. You pray for a spouse, you get a spouse and miss your destiny. And what should it profit a man to gain the whole world? But lose his soul, lose a sense of himself. So, so there's a priority. Well, here, let's, let's, let's go for it. Here we go. But seek first, what? The kingdom of God. And that may not be a very sexy term. Hello, let's keep it all the way real. That may not be a sexy term. Seek first the kingdom. Oh, the kingdom of God? Yes, if you understood what it was. Here's one parable about the kingdom. Here's what it says. It says the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant who, when he found this pearl of great price, he sold all the other pearls he had and bought that one. It's like a farmer who, who, who owned a field or he found a field of great value and sold all the other things. He bought this field. So in other words, the kingdom of God is everything. Everything's in it. It's the reign and the rule of God. It is the awesome, glorious dimension and dynamic of a sovereign God who is perfect and does all things well and has thought about all things. You know how you go to a house and somebody's built a house and they forgot to put something in it? It's a beautiful house, but you're like, why is this room so small? You think about the kingdom of God, it's God's domain, and it lacks nothing. He thought about every single thing when he designed it, when he built it. Everything is there concerning you. Oh, God help me. Exceedingly, abundantly, far above what you can ask or imagine concerning your life and the lives of everyone else that are a part of it is in the kingdom. You talk about a mate. You haven't seen the mate that God has for you in the kingdom. Oh my God. You couldn't have asked. You couldn't ask for a mate like that. You talk about a job. He does all things well. So God is saying, don't seek all these other things. Here is your priority. Seek first the kingdom. And then he says, and all those other things that you desire will be added to you because they are in the kingdom. But God forbid I seek those things and get them and miss the kingdom. It's all there. I promise you, I promise you that God has placed everything that is that concerns your life and destiny in the kingdom it is there that's why 
you seek it first. So the first thought that God gave me as it relates to speaking to you is for you to reestablish and reestablish your priorities. Is the kingdom first? I believe right now there's some wonderful people in here and you are seeking the kingdom, but you're seeking the kingdom second or third. That's good. And that's not a judgment. It's the truth. And we've all been there, right? You're seeking the kingdom. But it doesn't say seek the kingdom. It says seek first the kingdom. Priority. I remember when um, we were at the old church, we were in the old building. And we came to that place, we were leasing a, a Seven Adventist church right there in North Hollywood. Some of you were there. And we walked in there to a 60-day notice to vacate. At the time, we had 2,000 members. 2,000 members. And we have 60 days to move out of that place and find a facility that can hold 2,000 members. Now, I did what every brave, courageous, spirit-filled men, man or woman of God would do. I said, oh God, what am I going to do? Like, I'm just, okay, it's okay. And we started, we started looking for buildings. And we were striking out. And that clock is ticking. That 60 day, that 60 day deadline is ticking and ticking. And we're looking for I'm freaking out. I got my broker looking for stuff. I'm like, this is crazy. And we got down to about a month. And I remember God speaking to me. And that doesn't seem like much, but to get a building that can hold that many people. Hello, somebody. And to get all the paperwork done and the capital need and all that kind of stuff in 60, in 60 days is crazy. 30 days is even more crazy. Just, just, just shoot me somebody. That's what, I mean, just bad, right? Don't shoot me, love me. Um, so I remember about 60 day, 30 days out and I had been looking for this building and God came to me and he said, stop seeking the building, seek the kingdom. And I'm like, I don't understand what I'm saying. There's 2,000 people. Man. And he said, son, stop seeking the building. Seek the kingdom. You might get a building and the kingdom not be there. But if you find the kingdom, the building for certain is there. Wow. And it was a simple adjustment in my thinking. And I remembered, wait a minute, I'm not doing this for the building. I'm not even doing this for the people. I'm doing this for the kingdom. And in the kingdom is everything that I will need to fulfill my calling and to fulfill everything that concerns my life. And it was just a paradigm shift. Oh, God, I feel it. And the moment that my paradigm shift from being in need of a building to being in need of the kingdom and realize that I'm pursuing the kingdom, this peace came over and this place turned up. I believe with all of my heart that if I was committed to pursuing the building and the building alone, I would have never found this place or I would have found a place that would have been a headache and not the perfect will of God. See, family, I'm telling you, everything that you need, everything that's assigned to your life, I promise you, God has invested it in the kingdom. And if you find the kingdom, you find your stuff. That's why he says, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and alignment. That's why you don't pray for provision, you pray for wisdom. Lord, give me wisdom so that I'll know where to stand, so that I'm standing in the place of alignment where everything that I need exists already. Are you hearing me? I'm not asking you to give it to me, I'm asking you to tell me where it is. 
give me wisdom. If you're going to spend an hour in prayer, don't spend an hour in prayer asking God for things that he already knows that you need. Oh, God. But if you can be faith-filled enough to understand that he's already got certain things, as a matter of fact, that he's already got all things worked out, then you can start praying the prayers that he wants you to pray, partner with him, and then you turn around and everything you thought was lacking is following you goodness and mercy pursuing you you turn around I thought that was gone and it's in your back pocket That's good. you ever maybe you're not old enough but you ever been looking for some keys and they be in your hand already and you're looking all over the house and you're blaming everybody where did you put my keys and I am and the doggone thing is in your hand and you have driven everybody in your house crazy and it's in your hands. Oh, you ever been looking for your phone, but you're talking on it? <laughs> where I put my phone? Like where? Somebody took my phone. And you tell somebody the phone. Yeah, but somebody, somebody took my phone. And they're playing with you, right? They won't say anything. You're talking. They, I'm saying nothing. I'm going to see how long this thing will last. <laughs> That's how it is with the kingdom. We've already got it. And all that time we spend trying to get what we already have, we could have spent moving forward in our purpose. The first thought is priorities. We've got to come back to making the kingdom a priority, trusting that it's there. The second thing, the second thought, the second idea, these, I'm going to run through these quickly. The second thought that God had he laid upon me, literally, is about us becoming better and really being ministers of reconciliation. If we go to second. Corinthians 5 and 18 says that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself and he's given us the ministry of reconciliation. I'll be honest with you, in this new year, there are some people you're going to have to release. You have to let go. You're going to have to relinquish your right to be offended. See, sometimes we, we feel a right to be offended with someone if they didn't say I'm sorry. As long as you don't say I'm sorry, I have a right to be mad at you. Why not? Because they never said, I'm sorry. So what? I mean, for, for, first of all, for a number of reasons. So what? What you have to do, I talked about a little bit on Wednesday night. What you have to do is you have to understand that sometimes holding on to it, the hurt and the damage of holding on to it is, is not worth your right to be mad. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? It's like what you get. It's funny. We think that not forgiving people hurts them. You know what? I want you to know something. <laughs> I do not forgive you. I am going to hold all this pain on the inside of me and make myself miserable. How do you like that? 